Well, Fusion Church, how are you doing today? Come on, let's give a shout out to everyone that's uh, joining with us. Again, as usual, we always got our Cumberland County location with us. So come on, one more time, let's celebrate our Cumberland County. You had an amazing Easter over there. Absolutely fantastic, fantastic, fantastic with what God's doing. And again, we've got our online family that literally joins us, not from just many states here uh, in the U.S., but literally all over uh, the world in many continents and our Egg Harbor Township locations. So come on, one more time. Let's uh, celebrate everyone that's uh, joining us together uh, today. And we're jumping, jumping into a brand new series, the most asked question uh, that we have uh, all the time. What, what is God's will for my life? Come on, pastor. What is God's will for my life? I'm in a dead-end job. I'm in a dead-end relationship. I, I feel like I'm dead-ended, correct? And uh, so what, what's God's will for my life? And, uh, and, and how do I go about finding that out? So this is a great opportunity uh, for you to be able to invite a friend over the next few weeks, someone that's questioning, someone that's trying to figure out, uh, what, what, why am I here, correct? Like, that's the big question we have. Why am I here here on this earth. And so we're going to uh, dig into this. How do I know God's will for my life? And for me, as a Christ follower, for the many of us here uh, that are Christ followers, uh, I always want to go back to the Word of God, correct? And, uh, and so we would uh, also understand that not all of us are Christ followers, and that's all right. Like, that is totally fine. Uh, let, let's kick back a little bit. Let's wrestle a little bit uh, with that, but uh, we want to we want to go to the Word of God because uh, even as we said, correct record numbers of us showing up for Easter weekend. That was amazing. Ten services, three days over two locations. Come on, let's celebrate all that God uh, did. Over seventy plus people making a decision to receive Jesus. Baptisms happening. So if you were one of those 70 plus people making that decision, come on, sign up for baptism. Uh, but, but we want to ascribe to the ultimate hope dealer, which is Jesus, correct? I'm still wearing my band. And every time I kind of felt like I was going to trigger this week, I looked down at that word hope. And if you missed it, go ahead and watch uh, last week's message over Easter weekend. What does the word hope mean? But if I go to the book of Romans uh, in the Bible, and again, you want to download the Fusion app, there's going to be a lot of scripture over the next few weeks. So I uh, tell your neighbor, this is homework. Come on, look at them and say, this is homework. Yeah, that was terrible. Try the other neighbor because they're, uh, t- this is homework. Yeah, and, and someone, they get, yeah, the, you're, you're like, I ain't looking at no one because I don't like homework, okay? And, uh, but download the Fusion app because I'm going to give you a lot of graphics uh, that, that you, you're actually going to get this uh, to, and don't cheat by looking at any of this, okay? Um, you're going to get this to, to, when you leave today, uh, not when you came in, when you leave today, uh, but you can cheat, obviously, by downloading the Fusion app and uh, onto your uh, device, and you can cheat and see what we're talking about. But the Bible tells us in Romans chapter, two, uh, Romans chapter 12, it says the following in verse 1, it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as, let's read together, to offer your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, okay? You are living, and God's saying, hey, I want to use you in your living and not your dying, because when you're dead, God can't use you. He wants to use you now, and yes, all the junk in your life, all the anxiety, all the stress, all those things, God wants to use the living sacrifice, but through Jesus, He makes us holy and pleasing to God, and the Bible says this is your true and proper worship. And then it says this, it says, and this is kind of key text to us, it says, do not conform to the pattern of this world. So everybody say that word pattern. There's a pattern that you and I have got in our mind. There's a cultural pattern. So I grew up in Southern Africa. I have a cultural pattern. If you grew up in the Northeast of the United States, you have a cultural pattern. Uh, If you grew up a specific ethnicity, there is a cultural 
pattern. If you grew up westernized, there is a cultural pattern, even a cultural pattern of time. Uh, in Western culture, uh, we start on time, correct? If we say 12 o'clock, guess what? I'm a five minutes before 12 kind of guy. In Southern Africa, it's called jumpers time, okay? So time is a figment of your imagination. If I say we're going to meet at 12 o'clock, in your mind, it could be 12 o'clock tomorrow, buddy, and I am totally fine. And that's the culture, correct? In Southern Africa. And so there's this pattern of this world that has been ingrained. But, but the writer of Romans says, listen, we need to, and goes on to say, but we have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Let's read that together. But be transformed by the renewing of the mind. How do we renew the mind? We renew the mind by the Word of God. We renew the mind by worship. We renew our minds by biblically getting together, getting out of the rows and into circles. Okay, those are just some of the ways. Prayer, fasting, scripture meditation, silence and solitude are ways that we renew our mind because of the pattern, our family patterns, our cultural patterns, our society patterns that have been ingrained, even uh, religious patterns, correct? Some of us are religious, but guess what? Your religiosity does not ascribe to the Word of God. Sometimes they go, ah, tell me where you see that in the Bible. They're like, it's in there somewhere. I'm like, it ain't in there, okay? And and so uh, we, we are transformed by the renewing of our mind. Then it says, you will be able to test and approve what is, what is this? What is God's will, correct? So then you will be able to test and approve what is God's will. Will And that's the question that we're all asking. What is God's will for my life? And so we're going to explore that over the next few weeks. In fact, the scripture ends there in saying his good and pleasing and perfect will. His good, his pleasing, and his perfect will. And some of us are in a situation right now. You go, I don't feel like it's good. I don't feel like it's perfect. I don't feel like it's pleasing. And, And I pray that through this series that we will get to a place where you can see that even the pain, Even the tragedy, even the disappointment and the grief that you might be going through is God's going to use it for the good. God's going to work it out. And and, and it might not feel like that right now, but I want to promise you that God, if you trust Him, if you renew your mind, if you focus on His plan for you, He will begin to work it out. Now, there's an equation, correct? And we've got to talk about this equation before we can get into these concentric circles. And this equation is that Bible study, okay, Bible, Bible study and prayer plus the body of Christ, which is the church, equals knowing God's will. We cannot know God's will unless we are in the Word of God. And I'm not talking about a drive through Bible study, correct? We've all done that before, correct? You know, drive through, like, you know, listen to the soap. Like, what's today's soap? And come on, I'm going to be honest, correct? I'm coming in for a meeting. I know that, you know, some of our staff members are maybe going to ask me, how was your soaping, scripture, observation, application, and prayer? And I'm like, okay, so today's April 16th, and I've got to be able to do Numbers 35, which I did do Numbers 35 properly. No drive through this morning, okay? Because I, you know, was spending time praying and asking for the cities of refuge. If you did Numbers 15 today, you know the cities of refuge that God was talking about. But what we tell to do is this drive through quiet time. You know, we just do it quickly, and I'm talking about Bible study, I'm talking about intentional prayer, and I'm talking about intentionally connecting in the body of Christ, the church, actively in the body of Christ. Then we will begin to discern God's will for our lives. Amen to that? Okay, so that there, you got to get that. That is key, 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 key. I mean, if I could carry this TV screen and show it to every single one of you and say, this is key. You cannot do anything else until you get this right. Okay, this is key, key. Tell your neighbor this is key. Look at them in their eyes and go, this is key. Come on, Cumberland. I want to see you over there too, correct? This is key, correct? Okay, so number one, number one is this on the concentric circles is kingdom, okay? So kingdom is number one up over here. So we've got all of this, okay? And all of these circles, they touch, all of these circles come into this big circle that we're going to talk about uh, in a little bit of time. But the kingdom of God is something that we want to be able to explore. And what, what, what does the kingdom mean? The kingdom is this. What does God want in width, breadth of time, okay? So the kingdom of God what does God want in the width and the breadth of time? So again, this is in the Fusion app, 
And then every one of you are going to get this, uh, this paper when you leave today, and it's going to have all of the answers right over there, okay? And, and so the kingdom of God is important. The Bible tells us in Matthew chapter 6, verse 32, it says the following. It says, for the pagans run, the people that are unchurched, the people that are far from Jesus, run after all these things. And it goes on to say, and it says, and your heavenly Father knows what you need then. And then it goes on to say, but seek first the kingdom of his, Jesus' righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. And so as I'm exploring what is God's will for my life, as someone is coming to me maybe at my job or maybe at the school I work at and saying, what is God's will? You want to click, number one, kingdom. We are here for something so much more than this, and we've got to seek first the kingdom of God And then everything else in my life will be added unto me. That lets me know that when I am kingdom focused, then God's going to take care of everything else in my life. Okay? Let me say that again. When I'm kingdom focused, then God is going to, in his sovereign nature, take care of everything else uh, within my life. And so the disciples, they were following Jesus in this portion of scripture here in Matthew. They They were worrying about everything else, correct? They were worrying about who's going to be the greatest in the kingdom of God. They were worrying about how they were going to get clothes, how they were going to get food. They were worrying about all these things. And Jesus says, hold, time out, time out. The most important thing for you to do to know God's will is not where you're going to get food, not where you're going to get clothes. Okay, so occupation. Some of us are like, what's my occupation? Okay, that's not the most important thing. One of the most important things is to say, I want to pursue the kingdom of God. And in pursuing the kingdom of God, amen to that. In pursuing the kingdom of God, God then will begin to reveal to me that which I am looking for within my life. In fact, think of the, the, and we we worshiped in that third worship song today. It was the the, the Lord's Prayer, correct? Uh, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What's the next thing? Thy kingdom come. Yeah, some of you are like, ah, ah, ah. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, correct? So, so that might be a prayer that you want to pray uh, over these next few weeks. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Do I take this certification? Do I pursue this new job opportunity? Do I make a move? Well, every time I say, if someone wants to make a move, have you prayed about it? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done within my life. Okay, so the first circle is kingdom. The second circle is into it, Okay. Into it. And so intuition, into it, is uh, what, what is the instinct within my life, okay? And, and so God has wired his kingdom to, to discern the will of God, but then you have intuition. You have a bent. The, uh, the proverb says, raise up a child in the way, the bent of the way that he should go. Uh, Some people are more detail oriented. In fact, uh, yesterday I was out blowing my yard and uh, my little girls have a a little uh, playhouse in the back and I was getting the leaves out of the playhouse. And as I'm getting the leaves out of the playhouse, I notice there is a piece of paper with a to-do list on it. Yeah. Yeah. Either my eight-year-old or my little five to turn six-year-old had written a to-do list to put up in their dollhouse in the yard of things they needed to get accomplished, okay? And some of us are like, mm-hmm, that's my girl right there. Uh-huh, I love her, correct? Okay? And some of you like, I get, a, I, I get stuck getting hives when to-do lists come out, okay? So God has created and wired you. In fact, uh, uh, into it means, uh, the, have I sought, have I felt, have I heard God in me and my life. Like uh, some of us are gifted in hospitality, some in administration, some in worship and singing, uh, some in uh, compassion and care. You would give the clothes off of your back, okay? And some of you are like, nope, I ain't giving my clothes because they don't, and you, you have a whole strategy for that. Some of you love spreadsheets. Some of you love creative design, okay? So that's the intuition. That's the intuitive, how, how God has developed you because it tells us in Ephesians chapter 1, Uh, 17 out of uh, the translation, it says the following. It says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, and I love this, may give you the spirit of wisdom. I love that. May give you the spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of Him, okay? And so when I receive 
uh, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, then I am able to know more of God, but also know how and why has God created me? Why do I get passionate about the things that no one else gets passionate about? Why do I have a to-do list at maybe seven or eight years old in my dollhouse outside? Because God has wired you like that. Now, Uh, In the month of February, uh, we did a huge push uh, to let as many of you know that we have an assessment page, okay? So fusionchurch.cc slash assessments, it's in your app too, okay? And many of you, hundreds of you took the assessments, we have four assessments here at Fusion Church. But again, as you are exploring God's will for your life, you want to be able to look at this assessment page over here and then go, what's my personality? What's my love languages? What are my biblical gifts, okay? Am I um, a grinder? I just love shut the office door and let me grind, baby. Or am I a conceiver? Like, I want to just think of all these big things and then get a team around me to make it happen. So that's right here. And you can still go on here and take those assessments and let us know so that when we're sitting down with you, so here's an example. Uh, Back when I was uh, probably 12 years old, I was like, it. I mean, this was back in the day, long hair, earrings, correct? And I was like, to be a rocking bass player at 13 years old, that is cool. And I was like, I started growing my hair long. I secretly went and got my ears pierced. My mom about ripped that earring straight out of my ear when she found out it was an earring. And I started, I I was like, I'm going to play bass. So my youth pastor gave me a spare bass guitar. And I practiced, and I slapped that bass, and I drew a picture of the bass guitar on my wall, and I cried out to God, God, Let me play this bass so I can be a touring rock musician, correct? Like, this is 1992, baby. And and, and, and so my mom was like, uh, Brennan, you need bass guitar lessons. And I was like, okay, I'm going to get bass guitar lessons. And so I sat down, and this guy's name was Ray Cognolio. And Ray Cognolio was the sweetest gentleman in the whole world. And he sat down with me growing up in South Africa. And I sat there with my black bass guitar, my hair starting to grow long. And I said, Ray, I said, you're going to teach me how to be a rock bass guitar player. And Ray, after his first session, looked at me and said, Brendan, you are incredibly gifted for the kingdom of God. But let me tell you right here, you are absolutely tone deaf. I love you. I care for you. You will never play an instrument in your whole life. Uh, Let's explore all the other circles, okay? So the next circle, so we got the kingdom, intuitive, and we got the presence of God right over here, okay? Presence of God. After that time with Ray, looking at that bass guitar player, bass I'd drawn on my wall with a Sharpie marker. Again, my mom nearly killed me for that, okay? Uh, Presence. I needed the presence of God. Because why? God is more than just an equation. Does that make sense? Okay, He is sovereign. And so, yes, I wanted to play the bass guitar, but I don't have tempo. I don't have tone. I ain't got nothing. Can I be honest? I'm a white boy from Africa. I can't dance, clap, or sing. But you know what I can do? I can lead a church. I can pastor a church. And I can believe for revival in this region. Amen? So I have my personal singing, but I'm never allowed on here. In fact, the days that I have a headset mic on, they're like, oh God, please turn him off. Literally, they're not blaspheming. They are praying. If my headset is on, all of them up here like, okay, so again, presence. We, we, need, we need the kingdom of God. We, we need the intuition of God, and we need the presence of God within our lives. The Bible tells us in Revelation 22, verse 13, it tells us the following. It says, I am the Alpha. Come on, let's say it together. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, okay? So Ray Cognolio, thank God he had the courage to tell me, Brendan, you have the presence of God in your life, but you ain't got no tempo in your life. Brendan. You have the identity of the Alpha and Omega, but you do not know how to keep rhythm. So figure it out. And and you know what? Soon after that, my youth pastor gave me an opportunity to speak to our youth group in South Africa. And I wrote a message, and God began to use that 
And along with his presence, along with his kingdom, along with the intuition of what God has given us. And so as we look at scripture, let's know that when we are pursuing the will of God, it's not just one thing that I need within my life. It is these different circles that begin to attach. Now, uh, we we talked about this in the beginning. Uh, Another important circle to have in exploring the will of God is that we need to do it daily. Daily, okay? Everybody say the word daily. Daily, daily, right there. Uh, so it, 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 it's much like a buffet experience, correct? Like if I go to a buffet and I just fill, 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 but I don't eat appropriately during the week, I will uh, get the incorrect nutrition within my life. I will expand and contract my stomach, okay? And that's not intermittent fasting, eating once a week, okay? That's called starving yourself. Well, the reality is, is that we have got Christ followers that are starving themselves because we are not daily in the Word of God. We are not looking. And what what does daily mean? Daily means the following. What does God want in the width and the breadth of the now? So remember we had the kingdom, but now we got the daily. The kingdom is what's the width and breadth of eternity? The daily at the bottom is what's the width and breadth of the now? What does God want me to be faithful in today? Okay, tell your neighbor today. Look at them and say, today, okay? Because sometimes, as Christ followers, we can get fixated on the tomorrow, correct? Now, I, I, I love reading the book of Revelation, but I don't get obsessed with the book of Revelation because I know that there's a work to be done now. We, I know that there's people that are gonna go to hell now, and we need to get them out of hell now. And we need to plunder hell now. Some of you are not getting it. When do we need to do it? Now. Okay. And we don't need to, the Bible says, don't worry about tomorrow, worry about today. Okay. And so again, Matthew 6, 34 says, therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Worry about the now, not in a selfish way, but God, what are you asking me to do in faithful service, in faithful stewardship to you today. The uh, Bible continues to say every day has enough trouble of its own. Isn't that right? Okay. How many of us go, yep, today was trouble. <laughs> trouble just follows me wherever I go. Well, what I want to help you do in biblical discipleship, okay, this is meat, okay? This is not e- Last week, the ultimate hope dealer for Easter, guess what? That was easy stuff, okay? Everyone left encouraged. Now, I want to challenge you to go a little bit deeper. And so some of us, you might be obsessed about the daily. Let's uh, put this... Um, kind of put these circles, you might be obsessed about this right here, but you might be needing to work on the presence a little bit more. You, you, you might go, man, I, I'm good with the soaping daily, but, but I'm not saying, Lord, make me sensitive when I'm in shop right. Make me sensitive when I'm at the gas station. Make me sensitive when someone is in need. Uh, or maybe into it, uh, and, 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 and intuition. God, there are some things in my life that I need to unpack through the assessments, okay? So, so they're all beginning to move towards the center, which we're going to get to in a moment. Also, Matthew uh, 6, 11, uh, which again goes back to the Lord's Prayer, uh, it talks about give us our daily bread, correct? Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Why? Because Jesus said, don't get too worried about tomorrow. Now, I think we should be planning. I think we should have strategy. I think we should manage our calendars appropriately, okay? Uh, but, but not to get obsessed about it, but to think about the now, the, the daily. God, what, what are you wanting me to do? Maybe the prayer that you could pray is, God, where do you want me to be? faithful today? Where do you want me to show up today? Where can I be presence driven today? Where can I pray that your kingdom be established today within our lives? Okay, so so we're moving along on the circle. The second to last one is the word personal. Personal, okay? So we got to the word daily. And so again, kingdom, big, intuit, uh, inside of me, presence, kingdom of God, daily now, and then personal. God cares about you personally. I think sometimes in church culture, we can talk about the church, we can talk about the hundreds and thousands, we can talk about the groups of 12 or more, the connect groups we're in, but but God is a personal God. It's the very reason he sent his son Jesus, that you and I might have life and have it abundantly. That's why Jesus died. It says in the Bible that he is the way, 
He is the truth and He is the life. No one comes to the Father except through Him. So, so uh, to, to know the kingdom of God, to know God's destined will for your life is something very personal. Uh, you can't get it from me. I can't give you God's will for your life. I can help you. I can do a personal assessment. I can say, yep, you're a type A. You're probably going to be a great leader. I can uh, do a love language profile on you. We can do all those type of things. But at the end of the day, the personal aspect is this. What are God's plans for me now? Okay? And, 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 and that is a journey of seeking God. Jeremiah in the Old Testament says, if you seek me, you will find me. He was talking to the nation of Israel that had wandered away. The nation of Israel was religious, but they had wandered away. They had squandered themselves. They were not walking daily with God. In fact, Jeremiah 29 verse 11 tells us the following. It says, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you, okay? Plans to give you a future and a hope. Uh, it says, then you will come to me, and I love this, again, personal, and you will pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me uh, with all of your heart, and you will find me. This is what Scripture says. If you seek God personally, you'll be found. Scripture goes on to say, it says, I will be found by you, uh, declares the Lord, and it says, I will bring you back from captivity, okay? Those places that we have been banished from. Uh, he says, I'm going to gather you from all of the nations and places where you've been sent. And so when we are, remember, go back to Romans 12, correct? Uh, the pattern of this world. When the pattern of this world, the pattern of my family, the pattern of my culture, the pattern of religion is so ingrained in my mind, okay, I've literally banished myself to places. And I think God is talking to you and I saying, hey, I want to bring you back. Uh, the scripture says, declares the Lord at the end of it, okay? And I will bring you back from the places that I've sent you into exile. And so the Jewish nation was in exile because they had allowed the patterns of the culture, the patterns of the Babylonians, the patterns of idol worship, uh, the patterns of the cultural pressures of that time to move them away from God's will for their lives. And so there is a daily aspect of me saying, God, Today, I want to surrender to you. God, today, I want to, the Bible says that we need to die daily to ourselves. Have you ever thought about that? You ever wake up in the morning and go, God, I want to die daily to myself. Okay, I'm not talking about suicide, but I'm talking about dying to the flesh. So daily is critical. Here's the last one. The last one is community, correct? Community. So when I'm beginning to fill all these together, they're all going to begin to move into the middle, which we'll reveal in the next moment. Or if you cheated on your Fusion app, you already know what I'm going to talk about. But community. Boy, I am a bigger believer than ever before that God works in the community of the local body of Christ. And so as culture moves away from the church, the local body of Christ. And again, the church is not a building. So uh, Cumberland County, they're in Cumberland Christian School in that gymnatorium that you're in right now. Uh, this, that gymnatorium, that's not the community. You, you at Cumberland County are the community. You at Egg Harbor Township are the community. You at our online family, you're the community that are gathering together. And the scripture uh, talks about what, what is God's plans for his local church, okay? What are God's plans for the church community? The church is the hope of the world. Let me say that again. The church is the hope of the world. It's not another politician. Amen? Okay? It's not another economic bailout. The hope of the world is not uh, peace with Russia and Ukraine. The hope of the world is not another party and a third party. The hope of the world is not a better healthcare system. And yes, we've got all that. But at the end of the day, the hope of the world is the church of Jesus Christ. See, governments have come and gone. Nations and economic world powers have come and gone. The Romans thought they were the best. The Greeks thought they were the best. The Babylonian Empire thought they were the best. The United States thought they were the best. But everything has come and gone. But the church, the body of Christ, has stood the test of time. The Bible says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God. Oh, I want to be a part of the kingdom of God. Amen? Because that is eternal. And so in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it tells us the following. It says, now you are the body of Christ, 
Each one of you is a part of it. Again, Brendan wasn't supposed to be a bass guitar player, but Brendan, I have a gift of apostolic uh, building. I love to go out and see the kingdom of God moving forward. What is your gift? We each have a part to play as we look and pray and hear the will of God. See, the scripture goes on to say, it says, God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles and gifts of healing. I'm praying that there's going to be greater healing in our church in the days to come. Amen. Gifts of helping and of guidance, gifts of different kinds of tongues. So again, there is a a place, a personal place, a daily place, a kingdom place, a presence driven place, an intuit type of place where God has wired me to be a part of this kingdom of God. If we were all the same in the community, if we were all the same in the church, how boring would that be, correct? But we're different and I love that. Man, I love when someone has a different opinion. I love when someone has a different way of doing things and as we begin to explore that. So all of that comes together, correct? To ask the question, how do I know God's will? Again, let's go back to that opening scripture in Romans chapter 12, verse one. It said the following, it says, therefore, brothers and sisters, I urge you, in view of God's mercy to offer yourselves as living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. Here it is. This is your proper and true worship. Then it says this, do not conform to the patterns. Remember the neural pathways, the in, ingraining of culture and religion, uh, re, re, uh, ingraining of political ideology. Maybe we've got to throw that out. Ingraining of economic thought patterns. Okay, all of that gets us in trouble. But then he says, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do you renew your mind? In the Word of God. How do you renew your mind? In worship. How do you renew your mind? Maybe counseling. How do you renew your mind? Maybe silence and solitude. How do you renew your mind? Maybe fasting. How do you renew your mind? Guaranteed, I'm in a freedom group right now. And freedom is one of the best ways that I can renew my mind. Oh my gosh. The other week when we were talking about the Word of God, it was just an absolute game changer. So we need to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that, here it is, here it is, that we will be able to test, 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 and approve what God's will is for my life. His good, His pleasing, and His perfect will. Amen? So all of these circles come back to one that's found in the middle. Let's go ahead and let's throw it up. Okay, so it is the revealed purpose of God. Everybody say the word revealed. Revealed, correct? So when I pursue His kingdom, when I develop intuition in my life, when I begin to be open to the presence of God, when I begin to walk daily with Him every day, when I begin to say, God, this is personal and not just a group of people. It's you that you're talking. You're talking to me. When I begin to say, God, what are you doing in our church and how can our church impact this region? How can I be a part of it? The revealed will of God begins to come into play within my life. So when you leave today, you get this handout. You get to begin to look at this handout and go, okay, here it is. Step number one, what do I need to work on this week? So let's do this. All locations, let's stand to our feet. And as we're standing to our feet, maybe right now, ask yourself the question, okay? What, what, what's the Holy Spirit saying to me right now? Okay? Maybe ask yourself the question, what's my, an application point number one, what's my best next step this week? Like, what, what's this one thing that I need to lock into? You might go, man, I'm all about personal, but I really stink at community. Oh, you might go, man, I really need to explore those gifts assessments and know what God's saying to me. Maybe I need to be more open to His presence and I need to show up to a midweek prayer meeting. I don't know what it is, but God is speaking to you. So number two, what, what's the Holy Spirit saying right now, correct? What's the Spirit of God saying to you? And number three, what, what's the circle that you can focus on this week to discern God's will for your life? Because at the end of the day, when they all come together, see, it's not one easy answer. But when they begin to come together, you go, ah, God is working. Can be honest? I've been working on this journey since 1997. After I graduated high school, I went into a ministerial training program. And I was living in the most poverty-stricken place in South Africa. They're, they're called the squatter camps. And I was living in this shack uh, with, with this family, and I was bathing out of a, a, a literally a hand tub of water. One night, they were, they were going to go for dinner somewhere at someone else's house, very communal living. I felt the Spirit of God say, Brennan, no, no, stay. Stay in this shack. So I stayed in that shack that night. 
I knew that God wanted to meet with me. I knew he wanted to reveal his presence. I knew he wanted to reveal his kingdom. In the poorest, most heartbroken, destitute place in South Africa, Brendan, a white guy, living in a shack in a predominantly African community, I had the most powerful encounter with God. As God began to reveal, remember the big middle circle, reveal his plan and purpose. What was that? To be a preparer of a generation. So nearly 24, 25 years later, every day, every month, every year, I say, God, I want to go cro- closer to your will for my life. I've had some good days and I've had some challenging days. But every day, God has been faithful. Amen. Let me pray for you right now. Father, right now. Oh God, would you come in your sovereign grace? Would you come in your sovereign mercy? Would you touch us and fill us today? As we move closer to you daily in your presence, as we move closer to you daily uh, in understanding and knowledge, God, I pray that you allow your Holy Spirit to fill us to an overflow within our lives. And we pray this and ask this in Jesus Christ's name. And all God's people say, Amen.